Hello everyone, welcome to Digital Health News. We are here at NASCOM LHIF uh, and we have with us uh, Mr. Ramakrishna Rao, Senior Engineering Director, Anesthesia and Respiratory Care at GE Healthcare. Thank you so much, sir. That was a wonderful session uh, uh, inside uh, and we heard uh, the panel discussion. Uh, you basically had a very different uh, uh, terminology for AI. You said it's a augmented intelligence and not an artificial intelligence uh, evolving concept. Could you please uh, elaborate on that? Yeah, I think uh, it's not my concept, first of all. I think nowadays uh, people are talking about augmented uh, because uh, the reason is basically a lot of data is used. Let's say, for example, when you go to the hospital, the data comes in pathology, or the imaging, or basically when you go to ECG report, right? All the data has to be curated, right? Then it helps basically the clinician to make a decision. So that's why it is not artificial, it's augmented. And in that sense, basically, it is helping a clinician to take a right decision. So thereby, all data coming together, augmented, right, helping the clinician to make a decision. And that's why we call augmented intelligence that than basically artificial intelligence. Yeah, we are well past uh, six months in uh, 2024 and AI has been the buzzword uh, since the start. The most impact uh, of artificial intelligence will be in healthcare and everybody agrees to that. But how do you see the adoption of artificial intelligence in healthcare in general? Yeah, so 2023, G Health carried a worldwide survey on patients, the clinicians, everybody to really understand a, what is the view of the clinicians and the patients. So most of the clinicians, the data shows for us basically 65% of the people like to have a technology. I mean, remain 35% has some apprehensions to really you know, understand or I would say first thing and second thing is basically appreciating it or confidence inside taking the data from it. And that is where the clinician stand is because they are traditionally using a lot of methods. First of all, they have to be trained in these areas. Then may they actually they believe in I mean AI more going forward. So I would say still it is evolving and the clinicians are basically learning if it's a proven for example mm. they are see they they take care of they want to make sure better care is given to the patients so they're really worried how these algorithms or these kinds of things are clinically tested or uh, regulated so thereby it can be used by them because they serve the patients so, so in g healthcare our area of interest is we and we vet the algorithms we vet the ai algorithms very very with the clinicians and the patient settings Thereby, this is a hundred percent proof. I mean, but it's not hundred percent proof. At least it is believable. The confidence can be increased. Absolutely. What are the uh, uh, solutions that you are working on, or you have you have worked on in the last uh, two years, which have inco uh, incorporated artificial intelligence uh, in your solution? Yeah. So a couple of things. I come from anesthesia and respi uh, respiratory division. Nowadays, because if you see post-pandemic, right, the operation rooms are becoming quite important mm. because a lot of people who have surgeries planned earlier, they postpone last two years is increasing a lot. Now, one of the thing here is right when the patient goes down to the operation bed, right? Normally the clinicians provide anesthesia. So what we build is adequacy of anesthesia, a tool which helps the clinician say anesthesia is sufficient or not. Mm. Because one of the important things is of anesthesiologist here is not about making sure the patient goes at sedation, he also ensure the patient walks out very happily after the operation is done, right? So we help clinicians providing the data, collecting from various sources in the operation theater and helps the clinician saying that, hey, the, the anesthesia is sufficient for the patient and the patient is good condition. So these are the algorithms which we built it in last uh, six months, we released the market. And few more things working on at this point of time where we help the clinicians to make the right decisions. For example, right, how do you reduce the clinician load in an operation theater? Because if you go to operation theater, it's very, very, you know, challenging because anything can happen at that at some point of time. So, but how do you help the data coming from the machines and provide a, a good insight to the clinician, number one? And number two here is, can you take the load? Because we release one more thing called ET control algorithm which helps is basically is clinician no need to set everything. The machine by itself, once you set it, it automatically takes care of the patient. So thereby the clinician can focus on remaining things. So some of these algorithms we released to the market, we have been enhancing them going forward. 
Absolutely. One last question. What do you see the future of artificial intelligence in Indian healthcare going forward in the next five years? Oh, I think it's huge because the, I think the demand and supply have a huge gap, right? So the demand is a large, it's growing basically and supply is very short. So I think the technology, I think if you leverage rightly, okay, and if you build the confidence in the clinicians and patients mindset, I think AI could do wonders for India. To be honest, I think it helps us to reach, I think, remote villages where access to healthcare is extremely important.